So the first quarter of 2022 is in the books. And once again, surprising events dominated the news. Russia invading Ukraine and the continued climb in inflation, they were the focus of attention and probably for good reason. I'm Kent Kramer, I'm the Chief Investment Officer here at Foster Group. And this is our bi-monthly look at what's been happening in markets and the global economy and what we think investors may want to know. So a quick wrap up of quarter one saw that it was fairly negative for stock markets around the world. It's not that uncommon, stock market investors are somewhat used to bad quarters from time to time. Most years, even the most positive ones, see the stock market draw down at some, somewhere between five and 10% sometime during the course of the year. But the drop in bond prices was unusual. When we look at those bond prices down almost 6% for the quarter, that's a big number, it gets people's attention. Uh, that actually represents the worst quarter for bonds since the early 1980s, over 40 years ago. The reason for that bad quarter was the growing expectation that the Federal Reserve was going to be raising interest rates somewhere between two and two and a half percent, probably by the end of 2022. More on this later, but in general, as interest rates rise, bond prices fall. And we certainly saw that in the first quarter of 2022. Since the end of the quarter, the last two weeks have really been more of the same. High growth stocks have fallen a little bit further, but nothing else is really going up either. One unusual asset class that posted high returns in the first quarter was commodities. Those commodities, you see the green line there, they were up over 25% for the quarter. The Bloomberg index shown here includes commodities like oil, crops, precious metals, industrial metals, and building materials like lumber. Inflation, which fed by high demand and supply uncertainty due to the war in Ukraine, were the main drivers of that inflationary return that we saw in commodities. If we look again at kind of returns for the entire quarter, what you see across the board, really, no matter whether you're in the United States, outside of the United States, and value stocks or growth stocks, everything was pretty much negative, including bonds, as we mentioned before. In that lone bright spot was commodities due primarily to the inflationary environment. But if you look at those returns over the longer period of time, you'll note that commodities really show far less attractive premium for long-term investors. We've had low inflation for a while now, and the five, 10, and 20-year returns for most stock market asset classes have been far more rewarding for investors than those long-term returns for commodities, which over the last 20 years have just been over 1%. First quarter of 2022 also saw continued improvement in employment. We're back within one-tenth of 1% 1 of our pre-COVID lows. And you can see this is some of the lowest unemployment numbers in the last 50 years. We still have more jobs available than workers to fill them, which adds to the inflationary environment for now. We talked about inflation in our last financial perspectives. We also mentioned that the Fed was signaling interest rate increases to fight it. You know, the Federal Reserve has something called a dual mandate. And that dual mandate is to provide for maximum employment and then stable prices in the US economy. As we just saw, the economy is doing a great job of moving towards the employment goal, but because of higher inflation, the stable price goal is not being met. And the Federal Reserve has begun raising their Fed funds rates, signaling their intent to use monetary policy, hiking interest rates to combat inflation. You know, year over year, inflation has been climbing. Again, it was 7.87% at the end of February. And there's a consensus of economists that expects the March number, which is due out on Tuesday, to be somewhere between 8 and 8.5%. Those same economists think that inflation may be peaking at around that eight to eight and a half percent level. So the question is, well, why is it peaking? Well, one of the reasons why is because as prices rise, consumers tend to become less demand driven. In other words, as prices go up, we consume less. If you think about driving habits, for example, as the prices, the price of gas in your car goes up, you might think less or might think the second time about taking that long trip just because of the price of gasoline. Also, China's economy is slowing. The European economy is certainly slowing due to the war in Ukraine. All those things combine to slow the US economy as well, which should actually slow down inflation. The lower graph on this page illustrates the interest rate on the 10-year Treasury bond. It shows it increasing quite a bit. Again, this indicates the bond market it expects the Fed to follow through. They're going to continue to raise rates to try to get inflation under control. They'd like to get inflation back down to 2 or 3%. And again, we expect it to be somewhere north of 8% when we get the number this week. Foster Group posted a webinar last week where Jason Brown and I talked about the current impacts of the war in Ukraine, as well as interest rates and inflation. We're gonna close this week's financial perspectives with a clip from that webinar where Jason and I explain how the Fed communicates about 
interest rates or future interest rate policy and monetary policy and how the bond markets respond to that communication. After this clip, we'll be back and show you how to you can get to the webinar. You'll see the address here on your screen, and then we'll close out this week's financial perspectives. A certain amount of in inflation, probably good. Mm -hmm. But this is this is well beyond what yeah. the Fed would like to see within our own country. So what what are what are they up to to try and curb yeah. this inflation? That's right. So the Federal Reserve, they have kind of two big mandates. If you watch the news at all, you hear people talk about, well, it's to moderate inflation and to help with the full employment numbers in the economy. So we've seen since the pandemic, unemployment rates drop dramatically. Matter of fact, there are more jobs available than there are people to fill them. So the demand for employees is high, causing some wages to rise, which some people would say, well, that's a reasonable thing. We're happy to see people get paid a little bit more. At the same time, it feeds into that inflation narrative, just one more pressure on prices. So the Federal Reserve would like inflation to be somewhere between 2 and 3%. That's kind of their long-term target. Mm -hmm. Well, we're obviously way out of that range today. One of the tools that they have to control inflation monetary policy is to raise interest rates. They really only directly control one interest rate, but what they do is they communicate their desire to mm -hmm. have interest rates rise. We're going to say, we're going to raise our rate. And then the rest of the world says, well, that means rates in general are going to rise, even though they don't directly control them. And the way that they kind of indicate what they want to do with interest rates is something called the dot plot. Mm -hmm. And you can see that on your screen right now. And the dot plot sounds like a very fancy statistical measure. It or does. Something. Yeah. All it represents is the Federal Board of Governors, the people who have a vote on what they do with that one interest rate. This dot plot, each dot represents one person and their vote for where they think interest rates should be mm -hmm. at this date on the curve. And so the dot plot just shows kind of the spread or the difference of opinion amongst those people who are going to vote at the Fed to set the interest rate. But you can see what they're saying is, we are expecting to vote to raise rates. Right. And the market has said, wow, okay, they're voting to raise rates. That tells us something about what they intend on doing. The market doesn't have to wait for the Federal Reserve to raise rates. Mm -hmm. You can just react right now. Yeah. Well, and you've got a little chart that shows us, I think that reaction, that immediate reaction, the Fed hasn't actually done a lot. Right. They've yeah. talked about what they're going to do, yes. but the market has already responded yeah. to that. Yeah, that's exactly right. And I and I appreciate that, actually. I think the Fed's learned a number of things you know, over the last number of years. Is like the market doesn't like uncertainty, surprises. So they want to get way out in front mm -hmm. and say, we are seeing this and we are planning on doing this in the future. Mm -hmm. And they've been doing a good job of signaling, we're going to raise rates, we see inflation. Some people would say they've been talking about it for too long and they're already behind the curve and there's difference of opinion on that. But if you look at this chart, this is something called a yield curve. And all it's doing is it's plotting the interest rates associated with different treasury securities based on their maturity. So very short maturity treasuries over here on the left-hand side, these are securities that are gonna mature, they're gonna be redeemed by the, treasury sometime in the next 30 to 60 to 90 to a year. Mm -hmm. And as you go out to the right, these are treasury securities that don't mature for 30 years. So this green line right here, the bottom one, that's where interest rates were on the curve in the marketplace in June of last year. This orange line represents where those same rates were at the end of 2021. And here's where they were on March 16th. And the thing to notice is the shift up in rates in the short term. Again, the Federal Reserve just last week raised interest rates one quarter of 1%. Mm -hmm. But look at this shift. This is, this is the market saying, hey, the Fed said they're going to raise rates by 2% or more in the next year. We don't have to wait for them to raise rates. We're just going to go ahead and start expecting or requiring those rates now. Again, that clip was from a webinar we produced last week entitled Uncertainty in Ukraine and Beyond. If you'd like to watch the full recording of that webinar, you can find it at www.fostergrp.com forward slash Ukraine webinar. You can see that address on your screen. We close out that webinar talking about how resilient stock and bond markets have been coming out of geopolitical events like the war in Ukraine. For long-term investors, we continue to emphasize the value of being diversified and staying invested. So thanks for joining us today. We appreciate your input on all kinds of things. As always, if you have questions or would like to meet with a Foster Group advisor about your personal situation, we would really enjoy doing that. You can reach us at any of the contact information on your screen. 
uh, foster group advisors are ready to talk about your portfolio, your financial plan, just kind of the way the world is working and how it might be impacting you. Also, if you have questions or topics you'd like to see us address in these financial perspectives, you can also let us know through these same contact points. Uh, we would love to be talking about the things that are of most interest to you in the future as we go through 2022 together. So thanks for watching today, and we hope to see you soon.